They're moving into Alabama. They're moving in to Louisiana. And in downtown New Orleans, there's a building that's got a great big sign on it that says, condominiums, $2 million each. Trump Towers. Now tell me how come we weren't supposed to participate in the Hurricane Katrina committee proceedings. But the situation of injustice doesn't begin with Hurricane Katrina either. It doesn't end with Hurricane Katrina. Before Gina, there was the situation in my home state of Georgia with a 92-year-old woman who was murdered by Atlanta police, rogue police officers in the city of Atlanta. And they barged into her home and shot it up. There was a situation in New York City with Sean Bell, who was murdered on his wedding day. There is ongoing the situation in New York City with the Warrens, Mr. and Mrs. Warren. Michael Warren is an attorney and so is his wife. They used to be uh, attorneys for Black Panther Party members. They were also attorneys. Michael Warren was an attorney for Tupac. They just happened to witness some rogue police officers on NYPD beating a handcuffed young man who happened to be Latino. He was on the ground and he was being beaten to a ball. They yelled out, you don't have to beat him. He's already handcuffed. The police officers decided that that was too much. And so therefore, they were going to get the warrants. So they pulled the, Mr. Warren out of his car. And then when Miss, Mrs. Warren got out of the car in order to see what was happening to her husband, they started to attack her as well. So now Mr. Warren is beaten to a pulp as well, and Mrs. Warren, Warren is also attacked. They now are in court today for attacking the police officers. They could have said that. Now, after the Gina 6 situation, we've got the Palmdale 4 situation. Are y'all familiar with the Palmdale 4? This is Palmdale, California. Now, here we have four little, three little kids and the mother. The uh, little girl, there's a birthday going on, celebration, and the kids are doing what kids do in the cafeteria. And so, I don't know if she dropped the cake or if they were throwing the cake, but the cake ends up on the cafeteria floor. And so the security guard didn't like how she picked up the cake. She didn't clean up the floor well enough, so he told her, go back and clean up the floor a little bit better. So she goes back and she cleans up the floor. By the time she finishes cleaning up the floor, it's time for her to go to class. So she goes to class. The police officer runs, the security officer runs down the hall, catches her, and then brings her back and tells her, I don't like the way you, you clean the floor. You've got to clean the floor better. So she, she cleans the floor better, but she says something to him like, I need to go to my class. And he doesn't like that. So he jerks the poor little girl up on the table, breaks her wrist, and um, the children are in the cafeteria and they start videotaping with their cell phones. This is what's happening. They also call the mother. And so then the security guard whips around and sees that he's being videotaped. So then he goes to attack the little kid who's videotaping him. The little kid who videotapes him then gives the, uh, my, my friend here seems to have all of these articles. Um, <laughs>
They face charges. And the security guard had, is on administrative leave with pay. The mother, who is a school system employee, is on leave without pay. So we've got that, and then we've got the situation with the acquittal of those uh, boot camp um, uh, law enforcement people who were responsible for killing the little 14-year-old boy. And the attorney in that case said, kill a dog, you go to jail, kill a black boy, and nothing happens. So now we know that Gina Six really is the tip of the iceberg of what is happening in our country. And so now what are we going to do about it? One of the things that I was very happy to see was that the young people thought that they could do something about it. And so they organized themselves and they went to Gina and they showed that without the mass media, only with the resources that we have, that we can at least make a show of force. Now, this event is a fundraiser for the Gina Six. Now, um, there's something that has arisen lately that I want to at least talk about. And that is the situation with color of change. Those young men, James Rucker and Van Jones, I know them very well. I happen to be driving from Maine for the second time um, on uh, the day after the election, November 7th. And I heard something uh, said on the Michael Bainston show. And I was so shocked by what I heard because I know the young men of color of change that I decided that I would do some research on my own and I would call them. And sure enough, I spoke to them. On their website are the canceled checks totaling about $210,000 of the money that was raised by their organization that has been turned over to the attorneys. The attorneys have received about $210,000 from Color of Change as of October. And so I don't think that Michael Basin had all of the facts when he made the this, this series of broadcasts that he made about Color of Change. One of the things that's clear is that when our young people decide that they're going to do something, we really need to support them. And we have to support them. When they make a mistake, yes, we need to correct them. But when they don't make a mistake, we don't need to criticize them for nothing.